Hi everybody and welcome back to Rayman Revolution. In the last episode we completed the Lava Sanctuary and picked up the third mask of the game after beating Fooch, Fouch, well, I don't know how his name is pronounced. But uh, in today's episode it's for some reason spat us out in Globox's house after finishing that level and uh, that is because our next objective is to head to Globox's garden, the sort of the well area beneath the well and that's in Globox's house area where Clark is now being held. Somehow the pirates managed to capture him, even though Clark has managed to scrap so many of them in his uh, in his life. He's just blown them apart and then finally they've managed to capture him. But uh, I'm not going to head to that location just yet. I will at the end of this episode. But since we picked up a new ability in the last episode, uh, I'm going to revisit just a couple of levels. It might be quite a short episode actually. But uh, let's head to the Sanctuary Stone of Fire again. And you might notice that we are still missing a familiar spirit and five yellow lums. So uh, yeah, this is just going to be another revisit episode. It hasn't been that long since the last one. Uh, I think it was episode 16 that we last revisited at levels. But uh, after this episode, there will be nothing else for us to grab in previous levels. Like, this is completely finishing up uh, any revisits we might, we might have to do. So, Sanctuary Stone... Whoa, whoa, camera! <coughs> just getting a bit dizzy there. So, uh, what we need in Sanctuary Stone of Fire is in the first area, which is... Uh, uh, this first opening opening section, uh, just beyond it. Uh, what I don't want to do is grab uh, many red lums. Uh, now that we've picked up the ability to hover above lava, uh, we can uh, hover indefinitely like this. Uh, it can be a bit touchy because uh, of a certain certain design flaw uh, with the cross button. You need to so you can still use a regular hover over land like this, and I can still hover by tapping cross button twice once while well, mid jump but as soon as you get above lava uh, hitting the cross button uh, makes you fly upwards so yeah it's there's a little it, it finds it difficult to differentiate between the two you need to pay very close attention whether you're floating above lava or not even if you're just barely close to a ledge hitting the cross button mid air will make you uh, deactivate your helicopter and if you're above lava then yeah, you'll just plummet into the lava. And uh, we need to visit that ledge on on the left. I think I can get there with the uh, hover. I don't think I need to go and get another plum. Let's uh, blow them up in the distance. That was a neat camera angle. Just temporarily using it. And then it disappears. Huh. Didn't notice that before. Okay, so I don't really want to fall in. Um, I'm not too fussed about grabbing checkpoints. In fact, it forces you to grab a checkpoint here. Um, even though I do want to leave the level. And it can be quite difficult to leave the level once you're in it, because, well, uh, it's on a... The, the portal, the entrance portal is on a high ledge. The spiral door, as they call it. Oh, fuzzy things. Okay, so, uh, Gorilla Pirate, and uh, here are the remaining yellow lums. Now that we can hover above lava, we can access this elusive area. And there's not an awful lot in here. Uh, I need to use the plum on the Gorilla Pirate again. And let me just pick up the remaining yellow lums around the room. I am still missing a yellow lum. Is that up here? Oh, yeah, it's up there. Okay, good. Whew. Started panic for a minute there. Am I going to have to play through this whole stage again just to find one lum? But no. Okay, so that's it. That's that's everything we need to grab in the Sanctuary Stone and Fire. But it's getting back to the beginning that's going to be a bit of hassle. Because I need to just continuously throw myself in the lava over and over again. And because I've hit a checkpoint, uh, that respawns me out, out in this room again. And I can't make it back to the upper ledge because, uh, well, it's higher up. Uh, and we we could have hovered uh, above the lava uh, through this this little tunnel here to reach this area, but I kind of want to grab the checkpoint just to be safe. Oh, that was weird. Couldn't pull myself up there. Okay, I kind of want. Oh, that was kind of what I was talking about before. So I hit the cross button again because I thought I was hovering above lava. But apparently, just because I just left the ledge, hitting the cross button again deactivated my helicopter. And yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit touchy controls. Like that, for instance, I definitely hit the cross button twice, but it did nothing. That was uh, I don't know if that was meant to happen. Okay, so let me just uh, drain my health bar. Uh, this is the reason why I didn't want to play the bonus game at the end of the last episode. And that's because I knew I was going to have to do this thing here. 
All right, and this splits us back out at the spiral door. And uh, well, got everything we need. Let's head back to the uh, let's head back to the Teeth Circle and jump into Whale Bay. And uh, I won't be able to do that same trick with Whale Bay because uh, the yellow lums are missing are part way through the level already. So I'm gonna have to play through the whole thing again. Ah, oh, I don't mind really. Oh, and I have to sit through this every time I jump back to the Teeth Circle. I can't skip through this. Come on. Do I have a button to press? No, I just need to hold the cross button. No, shut up, Teensy. I already know. <laughs> anyway, Whale Bay time. Only four yellow lumps. Oh, the fact you have to revisit this level just for that little is very annoying to me for some reason. <sighs> well, it doesn't matter. I'll I'll skip to the point where the yellow lumps are. Okay. Apparently that's an important cutscene. <laughs> that we have to view it every time we re revisit the area. And for some reason my initial shot did nothing. What are you doing? Stop running towards me! Freak! You're supposed to be a long range enemy. You freak! Oh, that sort of reminds me, um... In the PS1 version in this area, or the equivalent of this area, there's no keg uh, in this opening in the wall, but there is still a sparrow drop on the door. And there's actually something behind it. And in the PS1 version of the game, you have to like use one of the pirate shots. Uh, I think it was like a purple pirate in the PS1 version, but you have to use one of the pirate shots to get through the door. And I couldn't figure it out for the longest time, because that's the only situation in, well, any version of the game, I think, where you have to use the pirate shots to open open a passage. But yeah, apparently uh, that's just an exclusive thing in Whale Bay in the PS1 version. It's very, very annoying to deal with that having to uh, rely on the pirate shots, because they're not particularly accurate. Okay, and uh, this is the room with the with the shell portal and where we first freed Carmen. Uh, the switch has been deactivated, and yet Carmen is already free. Hmm. Well, I don't really need to use the shell. Uh, instead, you might have noticed this random pit of fire in the corner, and uh, this is what we need to use our, our new ability on. We can hover up using using the heat from that, I suppose. And uh, yeah, this is the only thing we need to grab in Whale Bane. Just those four lums. That's uh, very, very annoying having to revisit this level just for that. But uh, yeah, this is a bit of a weird, just random fight. See, there's the whole hit in the cross button. I thought I was hovering above the fire, but alas, apparently I wasn't. So I deactivated my helicopter and just plumped it in. Great. Yeah, I've done that a few times, so I'm pretty sure. Ah, stupid controls. Couldn't you have activated it with another button? Anyway, I'm going to get to the end of the level, if I don't drown. So I'll see you back at the Teensy Circle. It's amazing how short that section is compared to the PS1 version. The PS1 version is a slog. You, you go through these really long tunnels, following Carmen and fending off the piranhas. But in this version, you, it's over in just a matter of seconds, to be honest. Ugh. I wonder why they changed it. Oh god, I'm stuck on the... There was a little overhang there. I didn't realise. I didn't want to get it stuck there. I wonder why they changed it in the PS1 version. To something so tedious. Oop, oop. Stuck on random geometry. Help! Okay, made it back to the spiral door. Let's head back to the teensy circle. And uh, since we collected everything in this level, and we made it to the end portal, uh, I might as well do a bonus game. Get some health refillage and some golden fists. No, I don't want to play a bonus this time. How dare it default to continue game. Well, I actually do want to reap the benefits of a bonus game. Okay, be prepared for button mashing. Okay, let's go. Using the two finger method. If that's cheating, I don't know. Uh... 
I sort of screwed up my method there, I sort of changed midway through to one from two hand to one hand. But uh, I made it anyway, okay. And yeah, look at this look at this the box around the sun there. Bit of a mistake with the texture in there. Okay, golden fist for us, and a slight health refill. However, I was gonna do a Lee's challenge in this episode as well. Just because we've got enough familiar spirits now. In fact, we've had enough familiar spirits for a little while. So, uh. In fact, I think I've got enough familiar spirits for two challenges since we completed the. the Lava Sanctuary. We got the 60th familiar spirit from the Pirate Factory a couple of episodes back. And. Uh, we got. I think we got 10 familiar spirits throughout the course of the Lava Sanctuary. Shut up, Teensy! I, I already know. Clark, they managed to capture Clark. They're carrying experiments on him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Skulls Cave. Technically called the Skull Cave, not the Skulls Cave. Get it right, Tinsy. It doesn't belong to the skulls or anything. It has a skull in it. Okay, that's, let's use Lee Steel. I, in fact, we haven't done a challenge from this location. I don't think. We've only done it from Lee's house in Minisaurus Plain and from our cave in Rainbow Creek area. Okay, so we should have enough familiar spirits now for two new... Okay, let's see what two new challenges await us. Uh, okay, we have the trampoline challenge and uh, the second racing challenge. Uh, let's do the second racing challenge, because it'll be a bit longer. And, uh, <laughs> expand the episode length. Help! It's going to be a pretty short episode otherwise, to be honest. Just revisiting a couple of levels. Also, a place to do the challenges in order. I'll do the trampoline challenge another time. Just so I'm not like packing too many, too many challenges into one video. Okay, let's go. Uh, so this would have been the walk of power in a lot of other versions of the game. So it would have been the what? what did he just go on all fours for a second there? Suddenly turned into some kind of animal. Stop prowling around like a dog, just running around on all fours. I don't know why she did that. I don't, I've never seen her do that before. Was it like a weird animation glitch or something? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, normally she runs on two legs. Also notice she starts skipping around a lot. Like, her model just, you know, appears in one location after another. It's a bit weird. Okay, in this uh, in this challenge, we've got a few lily pad sections where we have to time our jumps in between moving platforms. Good thing that was, that, that ledge was there. I didn't jump for some reason. I, in fact, I didn't even see the gap in the floor. A bit of a design flaw there. Okay, yeah, this is the section I remember. So we've got a few lily pads that are stationary and a few that move around. And I've uh, got to time my jumps in between them. That was a bit of... Oh, no, that was fine. Okay. Yeah, I need to sort of react in time to... <sighs> he says and dives straight into the water. But yeah, I need to react to where they're about to move to rather than where they currently are. So with this one, this one moves over here, so I need to jump and accommodate for that. Okay, yeah. And another checkpoint, good. Oh, it doesn't really matter if you fall in the water or not, because it's still... It resets your timer, so it's very helpful. I guess that's why they call them checkpoints, so you can restart from them. Okay, that was a bit treacherous, but there we go. We're out of there. Uh, I think, uh, I, I'm sure I mentioned it in the previous racing challenge, but the, the walk, walk of life and the walk of power uh, would give you extra health in other versions of the game. Not too sure about the PS1 version. I think in the PS1 version you got extra health from freeing the creatures from cages, like there were various creatures inside the cages in that game. And uh, yeah, we made it and got a little health increase. That was very fast. Well, I didn't feel very fast. In fact, I fell in the water once, so... Uh, not very fast at all. Okay, got a little health increase. Whoa, did I skip ahead something like that? Um, did that actually show my health bar increasing or not? Or did I skip through the animation of it? Uh, okay, might have to do that again. I'm not sure. Did I glitch that up? I didn't really notice my health was any was any longer there. Hmm. I feel like I maybe skipped something important by mashing the cross button. Okay, so that's all the challenges for now. Uh, do the trampoline challenge another time, as I mentioned. Uh, maybe in a couple of episodes' time. No. Still got a few more familiar spirits to free, so in fact nine of them. So we'll be freeing them in. Uh, upcoming episodes. Oh, there's not too many episodes left, to be honest. Uh, I'd say about four, maybe, at this point. So yeah, there's we've only got a few more locations to visit, and we'll get the remaining yellow lums and familiar spirits in those levels. 
Let me go through them. Okay, so let me head on over to the Skull Cave, and uh, we'll head to the place where Clark is being experimented on. Uh, that's, it's a bit of a trek. And uh, where's Glowbox? He's been captured again. Uh, what a silly, what a silly fool. Catch me once, I'm mad. Catch me twice, how could you? Catch me three times, you're officially those pirates. It's my dad knows. I ain't having that shit. Okay, anyway. Down here in a sort of below Globox's house area. And we head to the Skulls Cave, and you might be wondering where the remaining yellow alums are for Globox's house area, because we are currently missing 13 of them, and uh, there's going to be quite a few in this area. And I'm sure a lot of them are inside the eyes of the skull. And uh, since we have the ability to hover above lava, for some reason that propels us really far upwards. And uh, yeah, there's a massive horde of yellow lumps in this, this eye socket here. And I'm still missing two, I think they're a bit lower down. Let's uh, descend a bit. Are they down this way? These? Did I miss them outside? How do I get out of here? Can I jump through the mouth? Oh, I see them, I see them! Okay, there's one there, and there's one there. And that's the Globox house area complete as well, in terms of yellow lums and... Well, there's no familiar spirits. So, anyway, this is the way... God, what the hell, camera, what are you doing? Uh, this is the way to the next level, where Clark is being experimented on. He's being held in the Tomb of the Ancients, which will be starting in the next episode. And uh, it's a bit... it's another one of those creepy levels in a children's game. So, I will see you next time for the Tomb of the Ancients. Bye-bye for now. Where is the entrance? There it is. The Tomb of the Entrance. The Tomb of... no, uh, well, whatever. See you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>